Hi to everybody. Hi to everybody who are in West, East and in the middle. Uh, the Socrative is open now for you. Uh, I think 10 minutes will be enough. 10 minutes later, I will start to solve the questions. I am sharing the Zoom link again. Uh, um, from yesterday, uh, just uh, one question was left. We couldn't uh, start that question. Uh, we will solve it at the beginning of the lesson. <clears throat> you yeah, welcome.
Okay. I see some of you uh, finished it, but let's wait uh, one minute more. Is it possible to start with any question? It goes one by one, as I know. First question, then second. Okay, two more, please. Two more minutes. Okay, I am waiting two more minutes. No problem. Yes, some questions may have multiple correct choices possible. So you should check all, all the choices then. Okay, let's start. <clears throat> this is the first question. <clears throat> okay, I yesterday I couldn't open uh, these ones. I had some problem, but today I could fix it. Uh, look at we declare an integer data type uh, name is num and the value is 11 which one is false so look at them say which one is false uh, that does not mean one of them is false which you can't see okay i see mm. Do you see now? Okay. First question. <clears throat> we declare integer data type, uh, name is num and values of which one is false. So we will check all of them. So when you, uh, for example, we are checking B, you see that it is false. That doesn't mean it is the only choice that can be false. You should check all the choices here. Number, look at the value of num is 11. Look at this is assignment operator. Remember from yesterday, uh, the left side is always new value. Right side is always for old value. So what is the value of num? The value of num is 11. So here we will write 11, 11 minus two. 
So from this line, the value of num will be 11 minus 2, 9. This is decrement. Next line. We are increasing the value of num by 3. What is the value of num? So we take the value of num from the previous line and put here. So we increase the value by, by 3. It was 9, 9 plus 3. So the new value of num is 12. So again, we have to look at here increment. This is the third one. Remember, it was uh, it is a special one. It makes one bigger, the value one bigger. So it is 12 when we increase by one. So num value will be 13. Then when we print, we will get 13 on the console. This is true, you see. Next, see, num is 11, 11 plus two, here we get 13. Then this is decrement by one. When we decrease the value by one, it is 13. So we take 13 here and decrease by one. So the value of num will be 12. Look at, we have another decrement by one, once more. So the value of num will be, when we put it, the old value here and decrease by one, 12 minus one will be 11. When we create it on the console, we will get 11. This is also true. Now here, we have increment. The value of num is 11, 11 plus three. So we will get 14 after this line. Next line, we have increment by two. So when we add, the old value 14 by two, num will be 16 then. Next line is decrement. We are decreasing by one. So num was 16 in the previous line. So when we decrease by one, num will be 15. When we print it, we will get 15 on the cursor. That's also true. So which one is false? None of them is false. False. Let me clean screen. Second question. <clears throat> we have two integers. Integer A is 12, integer B is 15. Look at here, we have increment. What is the increment? We multiply by two. So A is 12, 12 multiplied by two. The new value of A will be, we put here 12 multiplied by two, A will be 24. Now the second line, this is division operation. We, we have decrement here. It is dividing by three. B is 15, when we put here 15, B will be 15 divided by 3, 5. Then we have system out print A plus B. A is 24, B is 5. If we add them, we get 29 on the console. So the correct answer is D. So it looks more uh, much more mathematics quiz, as you see. Uh, for example, this one, there is no code here. This is just the order of operations. Let's solve it. If you are good at mathematics, so you will not have a problem to solve this question. Uh, maybe some of you studied mathematics long years before and you don't remember much. OK. So what was the order of operations? Let's remember. Uh, first, we start inside the brackets. We find the result inside the brackets. Here we have, look at inside the brackets, we have 12 minus six divided by three. There is subtraction and division together. First, we do division operation. Remember, if there are multiplication, division, subtraction, and addition, first we do multiplication, division, then when we finish them, we do addition and subtraction. 
So here we have six over three. Six over three is two. Then 12 minus two. Let's go step by step. Two plus three times 12 minus two plus three times four. Let's do that one also here. It doesn't change anything. Let's go together. Then let me write two plus 12 minus two is 10. Three times 10 is 30 plus here is 12. Now look at, we don't have any multiplication or division operation, just left addition, two plus 30 plus 12, how much? 32, 42, 44. The correct answer is 44. Okay, okay, another one. Mathematics. <clears throat> so we start inside the brackets here. What do we have? We have exponentials as you see, two cube, two times two times two is eight plus two times three squared is nine. Inside brackets, okay, we started. If there are some exponentials, first we do them. Then look at here, we have 150 over three, 150 over, 50 over three is 50, minus two times this one equals. Then we, have, we, didn't, we haven't finished yet inside the brackets, let's complete it. Okay, look at, we have addition and multiplication. First we do it, multiplication. Uh, two times nine is 18. This is eight plus 18 here. So here is 50 minus two times, let's rewrite. Eight plus 18 is 26. So this is the result inside the brackets. We will multiply by two and here is 50 minus. Look at, we have subtraction and multiplication. First we do multiplication, two times 26 is 52. 50 minus 52 is minus two. So the correct answer is, D. Okay. It was all mathematics so far. Now we have got <clears throat> which ones are true? As key value of Letter A, capital A is 65. This is given. Well, listen, listen carefully this one. Uh, this one, uh, so I think many of you made mistake in that one. Uh, SK value of A is 65. We have char data type, uh, which is A, uppercase A. Look at here, we have C++. This is increment. We are increasing the value of char C. Look at, now what are we going to do here? Are we going to uh, increase the ASCII value of C to make it 66? Or we are going to change letter A by one. Look at, uh, if, let's delete this one. If there was no C++ here, let me ask you. There is no this line of the code. Char C is capital A. What will we get here? What will the answer? The answer will be 65, right? Or A, which one? A, yes. Okay, C is char. When we print char, we will get its character. Okay, its character is A. We don't get number here. But in the lessons, if you remember, if we write size, so let me write a short list, um, system out print LN. If we have C plus one, for example, C plus one, what will we see on the console if we have C plus one? If we are adding C by one, Java takes the ASCII value of C. ASCII value of C is 65. We are adding by one, so we see 66 on the console. So I am, I, I am asking Java, if I add one to C, what will be the result? Java turns number to me, not the character. Okay, but look at here, 
I am asking Java, turn me the character, char C. Java turns me not number, but the character A. Okay, so let's open this line now, C++. Look at Java allows us to increase or decrease the value, the ASCII value. Here we are, here we are increasing the ASCII value of char C. It was 65, then that means the ASCII value, okay, of C will be, okay, will be 66 now, you see. Then when we write here, look at now this C is number or character. This C is character, look at. C is char data type. It's not number data type. So when I print it on this one, I will not get number because C is not number data type. C is char data type. So then C is the ASCII value of C is 66. Uh, in ASCII values, ASCII values, uh, the letters go in order A, B, C, D like this. The ASCII value of A is 65. If it is given, the, the next one, 66 will be the ASCII value of B. So we will get B on the console. That is here B, as you see, that means this is true. Yeah, it is very tricky. Uh, but uh, from this question, uh, you learn uh, one, one new thing, right? So then we have only C here, so it prints the character. But if we have C plus a number, C plus a number, it turns number, not character. Okay, that is a bit confusing, be careful. System out print ln 38. Look at this symbol. What was the name of this symbol? Modulus. Modulus turns remainder in division operation. So if we divide 38, 38 by 5, we divide 38 by 5. How many times? Seven times. Five times seven, 35. We subtract. So we get three. Okay. So remainder. Remainder is three. So we should see three on the console, but it is seven. So this is wrong. This is not right. Now see. Integer A, we get 42 percentage size. This is modulus operator. So from here, we understand what is A. What is the value of A from here? If we divide 42 by 10, 42 divided by 10, it goes four times, we subtract 40, remainder is two, that means A is two. Now look at here, B is, this is assignment operator. B is, look at assign as A, what was A? What was A? The value of A is two. So here is two. It is assigned as value of B. So what will be the value of B from here? The value of B will be two because A is two here. B plus plus. So we increase the value of B by one. What was B value two? After increasing by one, it will be three. When we write here, the values of A and B, A is two, B is three. Then we see five on the console. So that is three. Okay, now here, actually uh, here is something missing. Here should be written integer B because integer A is defined because here should be integer B. I think it's not much problem here. Uh, the, the one who wrote this question mean it is integer B. Otherwise uh, that won't be true. So this is integer B defined as A. Now the integer A is three. Then in A is A plus six, we have increment here. The old value of A is three, three plus six. So new value will be nine. Then we have decrement. We decrease the value of A by one. From this line, we get A is eight. Then we divide A by two. So it was eight divided by two. So the last value of A will be four. If we print it on the console, what will, what will we see? For 
here is for this is true. So which ones are which ones are true? Except B, the others are true. A, C, D. A is true, C is true, B is true. Here. Integer A is defined as five, integer B is seven. Look, look, A and B are defined here. B is B plus A. So here, what will be the value of B? Okay, we, are get, we will find new value for B. Old value of B is seven plus the value of A is here five. If we had seven and five, so new value of B is 12. Now we are here in this line. Now we will we are defining new value for A. So A plus B. So we look for the old value of A. What is the old value of A? Here, look at A is five. So we write here five plus the value of B. Look at the last value of B we found here. 12, five plus 12. So here we will get A 17. So A is 17, B is 12. Which one is true? C. C is true option. D of D. A is 17, B is 12. Okay, don't make such joke. So the correct answer is C. Now here, that's only one. Integer A is five, integer B is seven. Now we are defining new value for A. What is it? Look at where modulus operator. Here we have B modulus A. B is seven, modulus A, A is five. So that is, look at, we will find the remainder. When we divide seven by five, it goes once, five times one is five, we subtract, so we get two. That means from this line, we find A as two. New value of A is two. Then here, look at wave decrement. So the value of A, it was two from the previous line. Now we decrease by two, it is one. We have another decrement by one. So it was one, decreased by one, now it is zero. So question is, what is the value of A? The value of A is the final value of A is zero, B is true. Do you have any question about those things? Okay, good, clear. So D is true. Okay, we are here. Look at uh, here an object scan object is created in scanner class. So it asks the user to put some uh, data into the system. So we are asking, enter your first name. So line three, which ones can be typed for line three? Look at uh, the user will type name. Name is string type. Like name is not number. So because of that, the ones which start with int, look at this is int, can't be true. Then char is not true. Char is just one, one character, you see? We want, we want to get name. Name has many characters, right? One character is not, is, is not enough. So these two are not true. Now look at uh, the correct answer can be, look at, let's check B, is B is true. It is string data type, first name, okay, the name, scan dot next line. Here we have next method, here next line method. So what is the difference between them? Next, when a user enters, for example, Ali John. This is what user entered to the system, Ali John. Look at, when we have next method, next method, uh, reach the input till space. When it reaches space, it stops. 
takes one word. Okay. So if we are asking first name, first name is one word. First name is one word. Okay. So we can use this one because it will take one word to the system. So we can use this one. What about this? Next line. Uh, okay, so here, we suppose that the user <laughs> enters the name correctly. I mean, normally, when we say first name, the first name, there will, there will be no uh, last name, just one word. When the user enters one word, look at, next line reads everything that user uh, types. If user types one word or many words, next line method keeps all of them. So we suppose that the user types one name, one word, and this next line method keeps that word completely. So we can use this one also. Yes, gets all of line, Mr. Emre Aday. So next line method gets all of the line. So we can use B and C. Last question, no, question nine. Integer A is two, integer B is five. Look at, we uh, define here another integer whose name is 10th uh, and we declare that it's his value is, its value is zero. Now look at, first we have assignment operator. Here we define value of 10th again. What will be the value of tempt? Okay. What will be the value of temp? Look at, uh, it is equal to A. So we find what is the value of A. A is two. You see, A is two. A is two. So the tent will get two. New value of temp will be two. Second line. Now we are defining new value for A. A is B. What is B? What is the value of B? The value of B is five. So the new, we assign this value to A. So new value A will be five. Now this line, we are here. B is equal to 10. So here we are def defining new value for B. What is it? It is equal to 10. What is the last value of 10? Look at it was zero, but it is changed. Look at it is changed. The last value of 10 is two. So we put that value here, two, and assign it to B. So B will be two here. Which one is true? So did we change the value of A? No. The value of A is two. We changed the value of 10. As you see, the value of 10 is two, and at the end, the value of B is two. All of them are two. Uh, sorry, 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 we change A here. I couldn't see it, I couldn't see it. I couldn't see it, sorry. Here A is changed. So let's correct it. So A is here, it is between them. So what is the value of A? A is five. Okay, so which one is true? Which choice is true? Uh, temp is two, A is true, you said. Temp is two, A is five, B is two, yes. This is the true choice. A is true. Last one. So we have two integers, A is two, B is five. So we change the power. So we are defining new value for A. A is two, B is five. So two plus five, A will be seven from this line. Now next line. B is A minus B. So the value of B, the value of A, look at in the previous line, we got seven, 
We write here seven minus, what is the value of B? B is five from this line, seven minus five, now B is two. Now, next line. We are defining new value for A. It is A minus B. What was A, the last value of A? It was seven here, seven. So we, let me change the color. So value of the last value of A is seven. We write here seven minus B. What is the last value of B? B was two. So seven minus two is five. So what is A? A is five and And A is five. And from here, B is two. Which one is correct answer? A is five, B is two, C is true. Okay. Look at, if we notice in this question, what we did. Look at integer A and B, they were two, five. Now they are, Five, two, you see? So this code, this code swap, yes, this code swap, the values of A and B. We are going to, we are going to study today. Okay, so that's clear. Correct answer is C. So open Eclipse, our subject today. We are, we are starting with the interview question. It is from the uh, last lesson. Question is that uh, we will ask user to give us two numbers. Then we are going to swap them. For example, user gave us A is five, B is 10. We will write a code the code will exchange those two values. So the value of A will be 10, the value of B will be five. Okay, you will create, yesterday, didn't we create this class? Uh, I thought that we created yesterday this class. Okay, so create the class, I am waiting. So uh, it is day zero three scanner increment decrement from the, from the last lesson. This is the package. So on the package, this is the name of the class, interview question 01. And did you create the package yesterday, right? Uh, do you want me to share this one? Oh, okay, thank you. Hülya uh, Güler shared it, swimming two numbers. Thank you very much. It is uh, not day three. Uh, this is from yesterday. So it is in day zero three package. After this one, we are going to create day zero four package. This is in day zero three. Okay, let's start. So we, we, we are asking user to give us two numbers. How do we do this? We are going to create an object in scanner class, first thing. This is the structure. I told you, you should memorize that one. So after we type this structure, we have read underline. So we should fix the issue. We import scanner class from Java YouTube library. So there is no red underline. Then we ask for two numbers. Let's write. We are asking now. 
Okay, uh, we will, we are asking two numbers. Now the order is important because uh, we will swap the values of these two numbers. So let's go step by step. Let's ask, enter the first number. So after that, so we should keep it in a container. It is number data type. Let it be integer. Let's use integer. This is first number. First number. Okay. So we are keeping it with the object that we created. Okay. We created an object in scanner class. So we are keeping by this object. So we are using method. Which method are we going to use here? It is integer data type. So we are using next in method. Now we will ask the second number to the user. Enter the second number. After that, we will keep it inside an integer data type. This is second number because we are we are keeping it and dot next int. Okay. Now we got two values, two numbers from users. Uh, let's check it. Does it work? Um, let's write. Let's write now. Okay. Um, the first number, the first number. What is the name of the first number? It is here. We define first number as first num. Let's try it here. Okay. Plus, then the second number. Second number. Let's put the comma here. The second number. Yeah, plus. Now let's write here the name of the second number. It is second num. Okay. So okay. Uh, this is this is before swap. Let's write it like this. Uh, before, before swap, before swap. Do you see the code? First number before swap. Let's talk like this. Are you able to see the complete code? Okay. Now let's check. Let's run. Enter the first number. First number, let it be 10. Enter the second number, 20. Before swap, the first number, 10. The second number is 10. Okay. Till here, no problem. Now here, look at how, uh, how can we swap them? To swap them, uh, we will learn two ways. Let's write here the first way. First way, we will use uh, another variable, integer, okay, a temporary, let's write 10, which is zero. Okay, the idea is that one, let me type it, let me show it. Let's do it. Let me 
let me draw what we are going to do. Thank you. Uh, we created integer, first num. Then we created another, it is second num, second number. We created a third integer, it is 10, temporary value. Uh, suppose that the user gives us 10 and 20, and we created a temporary variable, which is zero. Look at now, what will I do? I will, look at, I will use temporary. This is, there, you can think them like three containers now. Here is 10, here is 20. I want to, swap these two values by the help of the third container. So what should I do? I should empty this container, right? If I am going to put 20 here, so I should take 10 somewhere beside. So I am taking 10 here in the third container. So I will define, I will define temporary this temp as 10 firstly. I will put 10 here. Okay, let's okay. Do that. Okay, so what is the value of first now? It is still 10. Okay, this is I didn't take it. This is physically I am saying I am taking to the container, but this here is still 10. First number is 10. I didn't change its value, I didn't assign anything to it, but I assign 10. You cannot see the uh, last line. Okay, if I move a bit to the right. Okay, do you see now? So, so when I do this, look at, uh, now after that, look at, I am keeping 10, I don't want to lose it, I am keeping 10 in the third container. Now, can I put this value 20 into this container? I can. Look at what will the value of first now? When, when I assign it here, its value will be 20. Okay, but I didn't lose 10 because uh, I, I am still holding it here in the third container. So what should I do at the end? Look at first number is 20 now. Second number, it is still 20, but it should be 10. If we are swapping these two values, first num should be 20, second num should be 10. So where is 10? 10 is here, look at, in the third container. So I will take 10 from the third container and put here. And new value kills the old one. So here we'll be, we will have 10, look at. Now, first num is 20, second num is 10. This is the idea, what we do. Let's write the codes now for this. So what should we do first thing? Look at, uh, temp is, temp is, look at, temp is a third integer. We have two integers. Temp is a third integer that I am using it uh, to keep the values. Okay, there are two ways. There are two ways for swapping. This is the first way. In this way, I am using a third integer and I call it temp, temporary integer, temporary variable. Okay, now, so let's write the code now. What did we do? Uh, first of all, we defined temp as the value of first time, right? So temp is equal to first, first now, you see? That is what we did first step. We, de we, declare, we define 10, the new value of 10 as the value of first time we put here. 
So by this line, what will be the value of 10? It takes the value of first down. First down is 10. So we are keeping here. Second line. Then we will put the value of second num into the first container, the container first num. So we will define first nine as the value of second num. So we write here, first num is equal to second num. Do you have question till here? This is assignment operator. So we are assigning new values, just we are taking one to another one. Now, one step is left. Now, first num is 20 now. Now we should define second num. I am taking, look at in temporary, I have 10. I am taking and put it into the second num container. So I am defining second num now. What is second num? Second num is that I am taking the value from temporary, temp value. So it is equal to, finished okay so this is the code it is as you see uh, four lines let's take this line from here and put here let's try it here after after swap the first number second so i'm not changing anything we get i am keeping first num first num second num second num so i should see that first num will be the value of second num second num will be the value of first num okay let's check the code now first number 10 second number 20 we first swap the first number is 10 the second number is 20 after swap, the first number is 20, the second number is 10. So it works correctly. Yes. Any question? Okay, good. Now the second way. Second way is without using a third variable. It is, you cannot see all, okay? That is, okay, let's do like this. Now you see all. <coughs> okay. uh, let me clear these ones. Second way. Uh, the second way, I should uh, explain firstly, I should draw the idea. Look, I will not use another container. This is first num. Here is second num. The second way is really tricky way. So first num, uh, first num is 10, second num is 20. Okay, look at the second way starts like this. I didn't understand the first base code. Why is it not first number, second number? Which one are you asking? Are you asking this one here or here? Which one? First println or second println? Because it is after slow. Second, this one. Okay, look at it. I shouldn't touch that actually, because I expect, I expect the value of first num to be, to be, I, I want to, my, my, my task is to exchange their values, right? Their values. First num is 10. Second num is 20. See, second num is 20. So, this is a dynamic code. If we have dynamic code, uh, always we write the name of the variables here. Look at it. So I want first num to be not 10, but 20. And the second num to be not 20, but 10. If we are swapping the values here, so first num will be not 10, but 
20. And second number will be not 20, but 10. You see, that's why I am keeping them same. I am not changing them. If I, what should I, should I write second number, first number? So 10 will be here, 20 will be here. You see, so I am not changing. What I have written here, I am keeping same. And as you see, the values are exchanged. Now here I have 20, here 10. That is my task. I was trying to do that one. So let me continue here. So of this web is enough to make it swap. Okay, good. Look now, what will I do? Uh, maybe it will be better to, I think it will be better to start the first line of the code. First line of the code. Okay, it will start like this. I am, it is tricky. I am saying first num is first first num plus second num. I start like this. First num is first num plus second num. Then what did I do? I changed the value of first num, right? If I do this one. So what will be the value of first num? It is first num plus second num. What was the value of first num? It was 10. First num was 10, second num was 20. So if I add them, first num is not 10, but it is 30 now, you see? Okay, what is my aim? I want to get here 20 at the end, and here 10, right? I, I, I want to swap these two values. Now look at how can I get, how can I get 10 here? Look at, I have 30 here now, I have 20, using 30 and 20, how can I get 10 here? How can I get? If I subtract 30 minus 20, 30 minus 20 is 10. So let, let's do like this. Let's define second num now. Second num is first num minus second num. 30 minus 20 will be 10. This is second line of the code. Let's type it. Now, second num is first num minus second num. Now, now what do we have? Let me take it. So what is the value of first num? The value of first num is 30. Minus, what is the value of second num? The value of second num is 20. 30 minus 20, so the value of second num will be 10, you see? So I so the new value 10, old value is 20, new value kills the old value, so the new value is 10. Look at, I got it, I got 10. So this part is okay. I fixed the issue for second num. I was trying to get 10, now, after these two lines, the value of second num is 10. Now we are here. I want to get 20 for first num. Using 30 and 10, how can I get 20? 30 minus 10, right? I should subtract. If I subtract first num value minus second num value, 30 minus 10 will be 20. You see, this is the third line of the code. That's right. So first num is equal to first num minus second num. So let's write. What is the value of first num? The value of first num is 30 minus the value of second num is 10. 30 minus 10, 
it is 20. So the value of first num is not 30. The new value is 20. Now that was my, my goal, right? I was trying to get 20 here. So first num is 20, second num is 10. So these three codes uh, finished it. Any question? <clears throat> I am raising the board. Okay. No, look. Uh, look at, I have used the same variables. You see, first num, second num. I made a swap here. This code made swap once more. You see, so we are still, we are working on the same same codes here. You see, so Java is doing the the first step here, first phase. Here it swapped the values. Then I swap the values once more. So the results will be same, right? So what should we do to see if this code works or not? I should close the first way. I should close. I don't want Java to read the first way. I will share. So look at, uh, how do we close that one? You know, how do we close? Control forward slash. So we close it. Now, uh, what should I do? I should take this one, this line. Now, I should write here after the second way. Okay, now let's check. First number, 10. Second number, 20. Before swap, first number is 10. Second number, 20. After swap, first number is 20. The second number is 10. So it is done. Okay, let me share the codes now. Okay, I shade the clutch. Now we can uh, we can start today's subjects. I am sharing the package name. This is the package name. We are going to study concatenation and if statement today. Now let's create the package here. So how do we create the package? Let's close this one here. Oh, okay, so I we forgot something to do. Okay, we, this is a scanner class, right? Then we open scanner class. What should we do at the end? We should close it, right? Good. Okay, so let's write here. Scan dot close. Okay, can you add this one to the end of the codes? I, I shared the codes, can you add it? Okay, today, come on SRC. Of course, you can do many codes. Like in the quiz, look at in the quiz, there were many things, many operations written together. It's possible. Come on SRC, new package, okay? 
How do we create new package? What if we don't close? If we don't close, it's not a big problem, but not to make the scanner class busy because Java, the scan, you will open the scanner class. And the scanner class is now waiting for us to enter some data, right? So because of that, when we open scanner class, we should close it at there. How do we create package? Okay, there are some uh, new uh, students today. So on SRC, I hope uh, you created the project Fall 21 English. You... So on SRC, new package, the package name is day zero four concatenation if statement finished. Now the name of, I am sharing the name of the class. The name of the class is concatenation 01. On the package name, we create new class. The name of the class is concatenation 01. Don't forget to click on main method. Are we ready? Okay, let's continue. <clears throat> okay, uh, when we say concatenation, we mean to join two strings. Okay, if you want to, we have a string, we have another string. So we want to put them together, make, for example, we have a word, we have another word. We want to write them together, make a sentence. Maybe there are many words. We want to put them together and make a sentence. For this, we use concatenation. Okay. It is that if you want to, if you want to join two strings, strings, okay, two or more, we can say, if you want to join two or more strings, okay. use, there are, uh, okay, there are two ways for this. The first one is, we, we will use plus sign. If we use plus sign between strings, we can concatenate them. The second way is, the second way is, we use concat method. There are two ways. First way, uh, let's create two strings. First string is string one. Let it be value. And another string is to let it be jump. We have two strings. Now we want to put them together to write Ali jump. String, okay, system out print LN. We write S1 plus S2. You see, if we write S1 plus S2, it will give us Ali Can. Let's run the code, Ali Can. But look at here, as you see, these two words are stick to each other. There is no space between them. How can we put a space between them? So you will come here between S1 and S2, you will put a space between them here, here plus, okay? 
So S1, S1 is Ali plus space plus S2. You see? Let's run the code. You see, it is Ali John. It's okay. <laughs> now, the second way. Second way is concatenation method. Okay, to write Ali John, first we write Ali, then we put space, then we put John. So we start by Ali, it is S1, you see. So this is a method. How do we get methods? To get methods, when we write the object, non-primitive data here, S1, we put dot. You see, when we put dot, here we find now concat method. Where is concat method? Here, look at, here it is the seventh one, I think. So let's enter the concat method. So now it is asking, what do you want to concat? We want to put space now. So we should put here space. After it, look at, I am putting dot again. I want to concate S2 now. So I am using concat method once more. What I am going to put here now, I am going to put S2, look at Java, look at gives us here S2, that's all, it's done. Let's check it. So after typing this to system out println, we should see Alijan two times on the console. Alijan, Alijan, it's right. Okay, any question here? Good. <coughs> now, we will uh, solve a few questions about concatenation. We are defining two integers, the integer one, let it be three, and integer two, integer two, I2, let it be four. Now, if I concate string and integer, what will we get? This is question. Now we are going to concate string and integer. I am adding S1 plus I1 plus I2. If I add them, what do we get? What do you think? If we add them, what will be the result? Yes, we can concate many times. It is possible. Look at uh, here, we use concate method. We use it again. So we can use methods as much as we want. We can use methods as much as we want. This is called method chain. Okay, method chain. So what will be the result? Ali three, four, Ali five. Okay. Let's talk about it now. Look. So look at uh, Java is reading code from left to right. It is up to down on the line from left to right. First, Java gets, look at, reads S1. What was S1? S1 is Ali, right? Plus, I1 is three, I2 is four. Look at, I am going to add S1 by I1 firstly, because Java is reading the code from left to right. You see, do not think that it is going to add I1 and I2. Because Java is reading from left to right, we should add firstly Ali and three. Ali is a string, three is a number. Look at Java con concates, concates them, writes Ali three. You see, this is string, string concate with a number, so we get Ali three. Then we have plus four. Now we are going to add I two to them. So this is a string now. This is Ali string. 
Ali plus three. So it turns string Ali three. If with Ali three string by four, so we will get string. First st string is Ali three. So we add four next to them. We get string Ali three, four. Okay, so it turns string. Uh, it is uh, the end of the first session. We have 10 minutes break. At uh, 10 minutes later, we are going to continue the lesson.
Okay. Do you hear me? Can you continue? <clears throat> okay, good. So I am repeating once more. <laughs> Um, look at concatenation. Look, uh, S1 is string. What is S1? S1 is Ali. I1 is number. It is three. I2 is number. It is four. Now we are concatenating string and I1 and I2. They are numbers. When we concatenate, look at Java, Java reads code from left to right as we are reading a book, okay, from left to right. So Java comes. First, the Java reads S1, then plus three. Java tries to do this one firstly. Java tries to add them. First one is, first data is string Ali, the second one is number. So Java will add them now. Java adds them. How Java adds them? Java adds them and writes a string. String plus a number is string again. Which string? It puts Ali and three, sticks them to each other. Just puts them together. It joins them. So new string is Ali three. Then now we are adding, now. These two are added here. The result is Ali three. Now Java will add the result of these two by this one. It is I2. What is I2? I2 is also a number. So Ali three is the string. We are adding it with four. How we edit string and number? Same thing is here, repeating. This is a string. Java writes that string here, Ali three, and the number next to it. It joins them. So the result is a string. Ali three, four, look at, I run the code and you see the result, Ali three, four. <clears throat> okay, now we have another question. If we do like this, or let me, let me delete them. What about this? System out print ln i1 plus i2 plus s1. What will be the result? Can you write? What do you think? What will be the result? Result of this one. Three for Ali, three for Ali, seven Ali. Seven Ali, three, four Ali, seven Ali. Okay, there are two different answers. Okay, let's see. Let's talk about it. Okay. Now, Java is reading the code from left to right. What does Java do first? Okay, we have number I1, three, plus number I2 is four. You see, Java will add them first. They are numbers. Java will add them. Look at, they are not string type. S2 is string, but first two are numbers. So three plus four, Java adds numbers. Plus, now here is S1. What is S1? After Java adds them, they are numbers, and the sum of two numbers is seven. Now Java comes here. Java will add S1. What was S1? It is Ali. So seven, look at seven is a number. Ali is a string. When we concatenate number and string, it turns string. Seven, Ali. This is the result. Seven, Ali. Let's run it. Let's see the result. Seven Ali. Okay. Another one. So what about this? 
S1 plus in brackets I1 plus I2. What will be the result of this? Okay, let's run the code and see the result. Result is Ali seven. Why Ali seven? Okay, very good. Everybody answered this question correctly, as I see. To select, yeah, everybody has done correctly. Why? Because we have brackets. Java first it does in the brackets, right? In the brackets, we have two numbers. Three plus four, three plus four is seven. So here is strict Ali, Ali plus seven will be Ali seven. Seven. Yeah, that's enough for concatenation. Now we are going to create another class. Let me share these ones with you. Okay. Next class I am sharing with you. If statement. This is the name of the class. So new class, class name is if statement zero one, don't forget to click on the main method and finish. Okay, now if statement is this, let me write a sentence in English with if. If if it rains, if it rains, no picnic tomorrow, for example. This is an English sentence, you see. So in Java, in Java, we can convert it like this. We start with if, okay. It rains, it rains is the condition. This is if sentence. If sentences have two parts, first part is the condition part. If it rains, the second part is the conclusion, the result. If it rains, this is the condition, then what will be the result? No picnic tomorrow. So if you write this sentence in Java, you get the first one we write inside brackets. You get it, it rains. The condition, this is called if condition. Then we have the result. What is the result? No picnic, no picnic tomorrow. You see, this is sentence, this is sentence in English. Okay, this is sentence in English. If we convert it to Java codes, it should be written like this. In Java. So this is this is the first part. The first part is this one is if condition. Okay, it rains if it is in if condition. The second part is called if body. Okay, 
So, uh, we, we are going to answer this question. Let me take it. Question is this. First example. Get a number from user. If the number is even, print even on the console. Okay. Now we have a condition. Condition is that if number is, is even, so we should check the number is even or not. Then if it is even, we should print even on the console. So we are asking a number, right? So we are creating an object in scanner class. We are asking user to enter a number, okay? So we import scanner class from Java YouTube library. We ask user, we ask user, enter an integer. Then, now we will check. Now we should keep it in a container after we get from the user. <clears throat> it is an integer. Let it be num. Num one. So we are taking it with scan object with next int method. Now look at attention. Listen, please. Now I am going to write if body firstly. Then I will write, uh, I write if condition firstly, then I will write if body. How do we do this? Look at the structure is like this. We write if. Do not write first letter of if with capital I. Don't write that one. Look at if you write it with capital I, you see it is uh, it is not uh, it's not colorful. Keywords are always colorful in Java. Look at if I write with lowercase I, you see it made it colorful. Don't make it with capital I. Now I am opening brackets. Then after opening brackets. Look at what should I write here? No, okay, let's talk about the structure first. Now I need if body. What is if body? If look at if condition is with brackets, if body is with curly braces. You see it. So I am opening curly braces. Okay, look at if I enter, look at enter, just uh, click on enter on the keyboard. Look at it gives us automatically the closing curly braces in the third line, you see? So do, do not try to write them, both of them. I am repeating. Do not write closing curly braces. Don't do that one. Just click on enter button on the keyboard, okay, like this. Now, this is a structure of if. If statement, we are going to write here the condition. What is the condition? If the number is even, how do you understand a number is even? Even numbers are divisible by two. When we divide an even number by two, the remainder will be zero. Right, very good, very good. Some of you are writing. So we are using modulus operator now. Num one, okay, modulus, by two, you see, num one modulus by two. So what do we want it to be? We want it to be zero, okay? If we divide the number by two, the modulus turns remainder, we want the remainder to be zero, you see? So here we put between them comparison operator, don't put equal to. This is a common mistake, okay? If you put just one equality symbol, what is this? This is assignment. We do not do assignment here. We are not defining something new. We want to see that. We want to see that this, the result is zero or not. The modulus is zero or not. This is the condition. Now here, I am typing. What will I write here? Okay, if the condition is true, 
if body runs, if body works, if the condition is false, if it is not true, if but if if body does not run. Okay. So if it is true, if inside this is a boolean, boolean is true or false. If it is true, so this code will work inside the body. What should we write here now? What should we write here? We will say it is it is even. Yeah. Let's check it. Let's write here one more line. If condition condition is true, then if body runs. Otherwise, otherwise it does not run. Okay. So let's run the code. Enter an integer 10. So what should be the result? When we write 10, it should turn us 10 is even number. Result should be even. Let's write not 10, but odd number 11. Look at no result. No result is coming. Is that okay? Did you get it? Good. Now, your task. I want you to write the code for this task now. Second example. Second example is get the number from user. If the number is odd, then print odd, odd on the console. Please write the code and turn to me. Write the if statement for this example and please share it. <clears throat> but Marcel, you have written just uh, if condition. You should write if body also. If condition and if body together. Okay, let's try it. So I am taking this one from here. Let's test here. So look at now if, if number is odd, if number is odd, then we divide by the remainder should be. One, right? So I am changing like this. And I can write here now, but if the modulus of number one by two is one, that means it is odd number. If it is odd number, write odd. Or you can write it like this, like this to get, uh, instead of writing one, you can write uh, this not, not, operation, okay, not to be zero, like this. This is also possible, you see? Let's separate, let's write it like this. If it is not zero, if modulus is zero, write even. If modulus is not zero, that means it will be one because there is no option. When we divide by two, there are two different remainders, zero or one. If it is zero, even. If it is not zero, that means it will be one, so it will be odd. Let's run the code. Enter an integer. 10 is even. Let's enter 11. 11 is odd. Okay. Now, the third task. Uh, third example. Oh. Let me take from here. Hatice Sever, where is one? 
there is one. Ah, okay, look at this one. Okay. Uh, if I use comparison operator and equals one, you see, that's okay, right? If the remainder is one, it will be odd. This is one way. Okay. Another way, look at when we divide a number by two, we have just two remainders. Remainder will be zero or remainder will be one. Remainder is zero or remainder is one. So I, I am telling Java like this. We can write it like this. If remainder is not zero, if remainder is zero, look at this code. If we write like this, that means not zero, not zero. If it is not zero, what will it be? If it is not zero, it will be one because when we divide by two, we have only two options, zero or one. If it is zero, write even. If it is not zero, write odd. That is, so you can write, you can write equal to one, okay, no problem. You can write equal to one, it works without problem, or you can write not equal to zero. Both of them are true. Okay, what about this one? Get two numbers from user. If they are equal to each other, print equal on the console. So uh, we got uh, one number from user, number one. Now we should ask second number, second number. Okay. We are asking to the user, enter the second number. We are asking, we are, Putting inside integer containers, let it be number two. We are holding it with scan object with next int method. This is the second number. Now we have two numbers, number one and number two. So let me take this one from here and put here. So what we say? Now we have number one and number two. We will say if number one is equal to Number two, number two, if number and number one and number two are equal, right here, equal. See, that is, okay, very good. Okay, Emra Aday gave the correct answer. Let's check it. Enter an integer, 10. Enter second number, 10. So it writes even and equal. Okay, uh, that's all from this class. Now we are passing to the second class, if statement zero two. Let me share it by you. This is the name of the class. If statement zero two, let me share the code with you. Okay, awesome, no problem. It worked, right? Okay, let's create a, now look at, we should, again, I forgot to close scan. Okay, I shared it without scan.close, please edit. 
So day zero four, we are creating new class. The class name is if statement. Wow, I took it. Last name is let me write if statement zero two. Click on main method and finish. <coughs> we have a task here. The task is this. Let me share, let me type here. Okay. Ask user to enter a day, then print if it is weekday or weekend day on the console. We are going to do that one. Let me share this task with you also. Let's start. So, uh, firstly, we need input, right? What is that input? We are asking user to enter a day. So we should create an object in scanner class. I'm not repeating again and again. You know what to do. Import scanner class from Java Util library. Now we are asking user, we are asking user to enter, enter a day. Okay. Now we will keep it in a container. What should be type of the container? Day is string. So we need string data type. It is the name, let the name be day. So we are keeping it with scan object. Next, which method should be used? Next method. You know. Now we have we have taken day from the user. Now what should we do? We will check if it is weekday or weekend day. Right. There are five weekdays from Monday to Friday, and there are two weekend days. So we need to use if condition now. If, look at if, look at, we open curly braces, then enter. We created the if structure now. Now, what should I write here? What is the if condition? Day is the name of the string. What should I write now? If day is, if day is, for example, maybe the user entered Monday, you see? So if it is Monday, let's start by Monday to talk about this. If it is Monday, what should I print? I should say it is, it is weekday, right? Monday is weekday. Now let's run the code. Let's see that. Enter a day. So I am writing Monday. Please attention. Look, what happened? If condition, look at, we have written day is Monday. If day is Monday, turn weekday, but it didn't turn weekday. Monday is a weekday, but it doesn't turn. Why? What is the problem? Okay, listen. Uh, the problem is that we use here comparison operator. I should type here comparison operator. The comparison operator. Operator. Okay. 
it is with two equality symbol, this one, okay? Thus, what first, if we have primitive data types, primitives, let's say primitives. So what does it do if we have primitives? It compares, it compares values because primitive has just values. For example, integer. Integer has only value, for example, five we define, or another long, for example, or short. Integers, primitives in general, they have value, right? So it compares, compares values. But if we have, if we have, here they is string, you see? They have written day is equal to Monday, check it. Day is a string, it is non-primitive. It is non-primitive, okay? What does non-primitive have? Okay, non-primitives have values and, and what? Non-primitive data types has values and Methods, yes, very good, but there is something else. Let me try to draw it. I am not able to draw. I couldn't I couldn't see the upper part of Zoom. I don't know why. I would write something. What could be the problem? Okay, let me let me write, let me continue. So uh, remember, there are two memories, stack memory and heap memory. We keep primitive data types in stack memory. They are simple, they have just value. In heap memory, we keep objects, non-primitive data types. Non-primitive data types has value. And those values have addresses in stack memory, remember? So every non-primitive data type has values and addresses, references in other words, in this stack memory. So when we write, when we use comparison operator, Comparison operator. Comparison operator checks values and also addresses of non primitive data types. Look at here now. Uh, I have written here Monday. You see, this is string. This is string. So, for string, for string, okay. Now, it's the comparison operator is checking. Uh, the value and also references, reference of data type. And most of the time, not most of many times, it makes problem. Because if I write, if I uh, create here a string, for example, a string like this, let me write. For example, I, if I write here six, string S1, string S1 is equal to ID. Okay. String S2 is Ali also. See? Now I want to compare them. I want to compare them. If S1 is equal to S2, that I am comparing them. For example, right, right, they are same. Okay, let me close these ones. Okay, now, if I run the code, 
enter a day. Okay, this is for uh, from the scanner class. Look at it is writing same. No, it is writing same. When I if I create as S1 and S2 here in this class, because I am creating in the same way, if I put comparison operator, it doesn't make problem and write same. Some, some because their uh, values are same, Ali, Ali, and their addresses are same. If I create strings here by the same way, look at the same way, but how I created string S1 here, the same way I am creating S2 here. If I create two strings in the same way, their references will be same. Because of that, when I write here S1 is equal to S2, it will, the body, this condition will be true. The condition will be true. It checks value and references. They are both same, then turns me same. Okay, but here, here, what is the problem? Here, what is the problem? Okay, here we are creating day by scanner class. You see, here. Uh, if I create, for example, another string, okay, which is exactly the same as the day, here, for example, I create, it turns from, from a user the same string. But if I created a string here, the same string, okay, same value, I mean, it will be a problem because here I am creating string, I am typing myself. But if I ask that string from the user, it will be created in a different way because creation is different because I am creating that string in scanner class, you see? So the creation is different. If creation is different, if creation is different, Java makes problems sometimes. So uh, it may not turn result or it may, it may turn a, a unexpected result. It's also possible. So because of that, uh, to, to avoid this issue, to avoid this issue, because for us, what is important? Just we want to see that day is Monday or not. Look at for us, just the value is important. We don't care the reference here, right? So Java uh, fixed the problem using a method. What is that method? What is that method? Okay. To, okay, check, okay, to check if a string has the same, the same value with another string use equals method. We are using equals method. When we use equals method, Java checks just values, okay, not the addresses, references. Now, let me clean this one. Now, let's open this. Okay, so what will I do? Okay, I will do, I will fix the problem like this. Day is a string. It has a method. Which method? Which method are we going to use? Equals method. Equals method is here. So what we are going to write inside? We are going to write inside Monday now. Like this. So if string has this value, then run system out print ln. Let's check it if it is true. Okay. I am writing Monday, okay. it turns weekday to me. Any questions so far? Any question? Sorry. It's not working. 
Okay, we'll write the others also. We'll write the others. Okay, let's write the other days. So we have written just Monday. Let's continue. Now, uh, look at, I can write for the Tuesday also the same structure. I can write if day equals Tuesday, system out, print LN, weekday, right? So I take this one from here. Let's test here. Okay. So what should I write here now? Tuesday. It is weekday. Let's test. Now, next day. Thursday. Then. Wednesday, next day is Wednesday. Okay, let's write Wednesday here. It's not a problem. Wednesday. And one day is left. It is Friday. Okay. So let's run it. And three day. Friday. We get big day. Look. Everybody look at attention, attention, look at here. I have written if structure five times, you see? I have repetition here. If day equals Monday, if day equals Tuesday. The body is same, look at weekday, system out print line, weekday, system out print line, weekday. We have repetition. So how can we write it? in a short way without repeating so much. We can do it like this, look at everybody, look at here. I am writing here. So I will repeat this code, day equals Monday, inside if condition here. Day equals Monday, day equals Tuesday. I am writing inside this body. What should I write between them? Between them, I should write or. If day is Monday, or if day is Tuesday, or if day is Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, write system out print LN. So I am erasing that. See. How can I put or between them? Or symbol is this one. This is or symbol. It is called double pipes. Where is it? Uh, look at in, on your keyboard above the enter button, above the enter button, you will see it with shift, you will click on that button. Shift and the button above enter. Could you do it? Could you do it? Okay. I am repeating. I am talking about this one, this one. Hey, could you find it on the keyboard? Find enter button. Above the enter button, above the enter button, you will see it. It is with backward slash. You see, you know, backward slash. It is on the same button, but to not to, uh, to type that one, you will use shift, shift and that button together. So you will get pipe. If you do it two times, two times, you will get double pipe. Okay. So now I am going to write. If day equals Tuesday, if day equals Wednesday, okay, or Day equals Thursday or day equals Friday. So it is too much. Let me. Make it smaller. Now we see all of them together. 
If day is Monday or day is Tuesday or day is Wednesday or day is Thursday or day is Friday, system out printed and weekday. Okay, so any question till here? Any question? Okay, the others. Okay, so let's continue. Uh, uh, look at now what we have written is for weekdays. We should write now for weekend, right? So I can do the same thing. This I can use the same structure, okay, for weekdays. Let's copy it and test here. Now this time I will have just two days, two days, let's erase the others, okay? So days are Saturday, Saturday and Sunday. So if days are Saturday or Sunday, I will print weekend day, right? Let's run the code. Enter a date, Monday, weekday. Enter a day, Saturday. It is weekend day. Okay. So now look, uh, we have case issue now. Maybe the user, the user enters Monday like this. You see, with lower cases. With lower cases, okay, uh, we do not get the result because Java is case sensitive. Java is case sensitive. Can you share? Uh, look at, I am, I, I am going to change them. I, at the end, when I finish, I will share because you see, I have written something, I erased. So we are for the perfectness, perfectness. We are improving the code, we are changing. When I finish it, I will share with you. I haven't finished yet. This is not, this is not, this is not the last step of the code. Okay, I will change that one also. Okay, so any questions so far? Any questions so far? So for weekdays, I have if body. In if body, I have five days, Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday or Friday. If it is any of them, if body runs weekday. Or if the day is Saturday or Sunday, if body turns weekend day. So we run the code, we see that it works. Now we, we have a problem, as I told you, case problem. Look at if the user types the day with lowercase letters, look at with M, M is lowercase here, we cannot get these results, weekday or weekend day, because we typed here with capital M. You see? So how can we solve this problem? Okay, we solve the problem like this. We solve the problem like this. Here, look at when you keep the data from the user, the date, look at we have a method here. I will turn everything, all the letters to lowercase. Maybe the user is typing first letter is small letter, second one is big letter, third one is small. So I will use, I will change everything to lowercase that I get the date from the user. I will turn all the letters to lowercase. So I am using to lowercase method now. So when I did, I add this method here to lowercase method, it will change all the letters to lowercase. Okay. Maybe the user, user is entering uh, with big letters, small letters. Some of them are big, some of them are small. But when I use this method, 
it will turn everything to small letters, lower cases. Okay, now uh, in memory, the string is now, the string day is with all lower cases. Now I should change my code now because in my code, look at, I have written everything with capital letters. So let me change to lower cases, everything. Not with big letters, with lower cases. Here is W, I am changing everything to T, this one, lowercase f, this is lowercase s, and this is lowercase s also. Okay, so did you get this one? Let's check it, let's check it. Okay, enter a date. User is entering, for example, M small, O and big, D is small, A is small, Y is big. Look at, I, I am entering this one. When I enter this like this, big letters, small letters, look at the day, day, day container is catching this one and turning everything to lower cases by this method. So user is entering with some different cases here, big case, small case, but this method, this method turns all of them to lower cases. So it will be Monday like this. So the user is entering like this, but I will keep by this method, I will change everything to lower cases. So in the memory, there will be Monday with lower cases. You see, then, now in, in, in the memory we have with lower cases. Then I am comparing Monday with lower cases. If the day entered is that Monday, right, weekday. So let's run the code, let's enter, look at weekday, it works. You see, it is weekday. Let's run it once more. Let's type, for example, enter a day, the day is, for example, Saturday, look at, first four letters are capital, the others are small. So enter, look at, weekend day. Why? Because I turn everything by this method, by the lower to lowercase method, I turn all of them to lower cases. Lower S, lowercase S, A, T, U, R, D, A, A. <coughs> okay. My code runs both weekday and weekend at the same time. Hmm. How? How is this possible? Okay, so let me complete uh, the codes, then I will share it then. Okay, so there is one more thing left. Maybe the user, the user enters something else. Instead of writing Saturday, maybe wrote Saturn day. Okay, why not? So let's enter, no result. So we should tell user, we should tell user to enter correct, to enter the days correctly. So how will I do this? Everybody attention, everybody attention. Look at, I will do here like this. So look at, if day is one of them, we write weekday. If day is one of these two, we write weekend day. Else, if day is not in them, we write here, else, look at, else body. We are going to write, we are going to write, enter the day correctly, enter the day correctly, same. So we use else. If it is like this, we can, we can. If it is like that, we can date. Otherwise, else, Write it like this. Okay, let's run the code. Enter a date. 
for example, like this, something like this, something. Enter the date correctly, you see? Okay, let's run the code once more. Enter a date, Monday. Look at, now, we have another problem, everybody. We entered Monday, it turned weekday, what is expected, right? It should turn weekday, but it turned enter the day correctly also, both of them. So how can we fix this issue? Everybody look at here, look at, this is if structure, you see. This is another if structure. This is another if structure. They are working independently. You see, this if and this if structure are working independently. So somehow I should connect them to each other. I am going to connect them each other. How can I connect them to each other? I am using as if method. As if, look at, I am taking, I am taking this code up, look at with as if, you see? If they is in one of these five, right? Weekday. As if it is not in one of them, then it passes to the next line, as if. Then check Saturday and Sunday. If it is Saturday or Sunday, right? Weekend day. It is, if it is not still in one of these seven days, as if it is not in one of them, enter the day correctly. See, let's run the code. Let's run the code. Let's check it. Enter a day. Monday, you see, just turns weekday. Enter a day. Saturday, you see, it turns just weekend day. Let's write a satra, for example. It turns end of the day correctly. Okay, okay. So I am repeating. Look, I am repeating. Look, uh, string here. Look. So we are asking user to enter a day. Here is object in the scanner class. Till here, no problem, right? Till here, no problem. So we catch day given by user. Okay. Then now I will check if the day is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. So how do I do? I am writing if body. Okay. What is the condition? What is the condition? This is a condition first. If day equals Monday, so what are we going to print? Weekday. Or, okay, maybe the day is Tuesday. Okay, another weekday is Tuesday. If day is Tuesday, what is going to turn? It's going to turn weekday. Or if day is Wednesday, again, look at Wednesday is a weekday. So it will turn weekday here. If day is Thursday, if day is Thursday, look at here. So look at, there are five cases, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. If one of them is true, if one of them is true, the if body runs. So one of the, this is all statement. Uh, from logic, maybe you remember all statements, when we use or statement, uh, let's say, uh, can you bring me tea or coffee? Can you bring me, someone is asking me, what do you like to drink? I am saying tea or coffee. If the person brings tea, 
no problem, right? Or if the person brings coffee, again, no problem. I mean, if one of them is true, if one of them is true, so the test will be done. So there are five things here with or, or. If one of them is true, the if body runs. If one of them is true, there will be printed big day on the console. Okay. Now the second part, as if the second part. Second part. So I cannot start from the beginning. Okay. Uh, we, we have how many minutes we have? We have 19 minutes. Okay. So, uh, where is it? Yeah. Okay, you couldn't write the code. Okay, I will share the codes. I will share the codes. Okay. So try to understand the logic here. First, if we have first condition, in the first condition, we have five days. If one of them is true, if body will run and write weekday on the console. If, look at, Java is checking. Java checks up from up to down. So we took day from the user. We come here now. Java is reading. Java starts reading by this. If day is one of them, one of these five, Java will write big day. If it is not, if it is not, look at, if it is, if it is one of them, Java goes out of this structure. If day is one of them, Java goes out of the structure because if body worked here, okay. One of them works, two of them does not. If you write the structure like this, only one of them works, two of them does not work. So Java is checking day. Is day here? Yes. Then it turns weekday. If it is not, Java continues to check the codes. Comes here to this line now. Now it checks else if. Now it is comparing by them, Saturday and Sunday. It, if, it, if it is one of them, the condition will be true, then Java will turn weekend day. So if it is true, the structure, look at the, the, the okay, it goes out of this structure. If it is true in the first, if, it goes out of structure. It doesn't check the others because it is the task is done. The condition is true at the beginning. If the, in the first step, the condition is not true, then Java con continues reading the codes, comes here, now checks them. If one of them is true, writes weekend day. If the input is not one of them, okay, then Java continues to check, comes here. Look at when we write as, when we write as, that means the other conditions, the other cases. When we say as, it is about all the other cases. If user enters in one of these seven days, we will see weekday or weekend day. Else, if the user writes something else, not one of the days, then we will see enter the day correctly on the console. Okay. Okay, so let me share uh, the codes with you. It ran correctly. I am sharing now with you.
the, the Yasin Anıl. The codes are shared in Java code channel. You see? You should take them from Java code channel. Just above the live channel, there is Java code sharing channel. So you should go there and copy the codes. <clears throat> Okay. So again, I forgot to close with scan. Okay, object scan dot close. Okay, that that task was really long. I see it was a bit hard, uh, but but we should uh, learn how to type to those codes also, it's important. Okay, to pass, you know, how do we pass? Control V. If you try, if you type Control V, it will pass it. Okay. We are creating new class. It's statement zero three. Okay, so we are creating if statement 03 class, come on to the Dave 04 package, new class, class name is if statement 03, click on the main method and finish. I am sharing the test with you. This is the task. Type a code to print each season after getting a month from user. So we will ask user, like previous question, like previous question, uh, we will ask user to write a month. Then we will tell user which in which season is it, the season of that month. We will turn to the user. So, okay, so we have 10 minutes. Let's try to write the codes as much as we can. So we create an object in scanner class, right? So that will be just like repeating the previous uh, Class, okay, statement if statement zero two. So system dot in semicolon. Then we import scanner class from Java to library. We ask user, we ask user, enter a month. Okay. Then we are keeping it in a string. The name of string be month, okay? So we are holding it, we are catching it with scan object. So next method, with next method, okay? So now what happened? We ask user to enter a month, then the user type the month and we catch it by string data type, the name is month, okay? Now, what will we do? Uh, there are 12 months. We should use if. If the month is this, 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 it is in that season. If it is in, if the month is this tree, so that is the season. So look at we have we need we have to use if if the structure now. Let's start. If okay. So 
What can be the month? Month, I am writing month, okay? I am using equals method, equals method, equals. What can be the month? Let's start with spring month. March, okay, March. Okay, let's write like this. If it is March or, or I am going to repeat this one, let's write here, copy, paste, okay. If the month is after March, another one is April. After April, now I am writing here, or, or. If it is uh, May, okay. So they are, they are spring months, right? Spring. So what should I write here? I should write here, I should write here. It is in spring, you see, it is in spring. Else if, if it is not, if it is not one of them, March, April, May. Okay, so let's do like this. Let's turn them to fix the case issue. Let's put here to lowercase method. So user is entering with different uh, cases in different cases. So we turn all the letters to lowercase. So we should write, we should turn them all to lowercase now. All of them are in lowercase, may also. So it is in spring. If it is not in one of, if it is not here, if the month is not here, as, as if, what can it be? Okay. Uh, okay, after spring, now after April, after May, we have June. June or, okay, the test year. After June comes July or if it is August. So if it is one of them, what should I write? I should write, it is in summer. Now, I am copying this code, this else if, and pasting here. If it is in, in spring, it should be here in this if condition. If it is not, Java will check this condition, these months. If it is not, Java will come here. Let's write here now, um, after August, September, after September, October, after October, November. If it is in, if it is one of these three months, that means it is in fall, fall season. Okay, so what is that now? Spring months are here, summer months are here, fall months are here, just one season is left. What is it? Winter, right? Okay, if one option is left, one option, we do not write else if, we don't write else if, because one option is left. Uh, okay, let's do like this, like the, maybe the user typed the, the month mistakenly. Let's write, let's write as if once more. Let's write as if once more. This time we will write uh, winter months. Uh, okay. December, after December comes. January, then 
February. Okay. If it is one of them, it will turn winter. winter. Okay. So if the input is not one of them, the input given by the user is not one of them, maybe the user type the month mistakenly. So we will use just else after that. We don't, to, we don't need to write else in. If we are stopping, okay, the last if, if we want to write the last one, we don't write else in, we just write else. Else covers all the other cases. Else covers all the other cases, all the mistakes, everything. So just, we, need, we don't need condition now, we don't need condition, just write else, that means condition, else, the other things. We will turn, we will turn type the month directly. Okay. Finished. Let's check it. Sorry. Is there any another way to do it? Uh, 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 later, you will learn uh, different structures. When you learn it, uh, it can be possible. But uh, uh, normally, we type the codes like this because here we have conditions. So we have to create if body, if condition, and if body. So we are writing the code like this. Let's check it. We have just one minute. Just one minute we have. Let's run the code. Enter a month. For example, January, like this with lowercase and uppercases. It turns, it is winter. You see, it works. Let's write, for example, January, mistakely. It turns time to month correctly. So it works. Okay, let me share the cuts with you. Okay, I shared all the codes with you. Okay, again, I had I had the same problem. Again, I forgot to close it with and got close. Always I am making the same mistake. I am after I share with you. Uh, I remember that I should write scan dot close. Please add this one to the end of the codes. <coughs> okay, it is uh, the end of the lesson. Uh, I advise you uh, to watch the record one more time, one more time. Uh, we started uh, two tests. Uh, they took much time, especially the previous one. There were many concepts that uh, I needed to explain to you. I hope you understood the, the last one, if statement 03, better than the previous one, because it was a kind of repetition. Uh, if you have still problem, uh, watch the record once more. Okay. Try to type the codes yourself again. Okay. See you tomorrow. Uh, have a good day. Have a good night. Have a good morning, wherever you are. See you tomorrow. Bye.